Corwin Janisak shared what that moment was like with CBC's Chloe Friesen. So uh, I was at the Forks and I decided to throw a line in and get some food. And I we waited hours and hours and hours with no bites. And then finally something bit my rod and this monster was on the end of it. And it took it took me about what ten to fifteen minutes to reel in. It was a crazy fight. That was Corwin Janicek, the angler who caught the sturgeon. He did return it back to the river. The social media post has been flooded with questions about what this means for the health of our rivers and more. And Derek Craker is the fisheries manager with the province of Manitoba. Good morning, to you, Derek. Good morning, Corey. So, so what, what was it like when you for you when you first heard that uh, you know someone caught a sturgeon uh, in the Red River? You know, here in Winnipeg by the Forks. Oh, I was smiling ear to ear. This is just great news. Um, sturgeon are been present in the Red River for quite some time, but they're not always encountered by anglers. So to see, you know, first of all, uh, someone so excited to catch it, and then of course a passerby understanding how how interesting it was to t- take that recording and then have so many people comment on it i thought was great uh so people definitely are interested in sturgeon and it's just great to see people sharing that wonderful moment with corwin and how rare is it to to find a sturgeon uh in the red but not and but not even just a sturgeon but a sturgeon that's that, that's that big you know 1.3 meters long it's actually not that rare. Uh, there's quite a few sturgeon in the Red River. Uh, I know that there was some comment that they might be uh, extirpated or extinct, but that's not the case. The sturgeon have been there, but there have been rare over the past number of years, but they're increasing. Uh, we know from the Master Angler Program that people are catching more and more sturgeon in the Red River every year. There's also a tagging program done by the federal fisheries uh, folks who have been watching sturgeon passing through uh, the city of Winnipeg quite regularly. So it's uh, not a, uncommon for them to be there. The size is also not necessarily uncommon. That's a mature size sturgeon. So um, they get, do get bigger than that, but that's sort of an average size for an adult. So this was just a great news story. Uh, so uh, in terms of the history of the species, though, as you said, you know, the, the, the population has ebbed and flowed. So, uh, you know, tell me a little bit about, about you know, the history of the, the sturgeon in, in the Red River and, and how it's kind of dwindled but but recovered as well yeah for sure so the lake sturgeon across manitoba including the red river were over harvested over 100 years ago so that's before 1920 the population's already crashed because of over harvest and it's un, it's unfortunate because sturgeon have a slightly different life history than other fishes they, they grow uh, large to large sizes but they also take a long time to reach maturity so when people harvested them 100 years ago they didn't realize that the harvest of those really large fish was going to have a long-term impact so the you know flash forward now literally over 100 years and people now know to replace and return those large fish back to the river because that's the breeding segment of the population and that's what's causing the recovery of sturgeon in the Red River and other places in Manitoba is that we now know that if we can protect those large female fish that uh, there it'll it'll help generate more sturgeon for future populations and we've seen that in the last uh, in the last 10 to 15 years we've seen many more people catching sturgeon on the Red River which is again just such a great news story right it kind of blew me away to hear the fact so for female sturgeon it's around 25 years old when they can actually start uh, spawning and for males it's about 17 so that's a, that's a long time if you catch it and that can really throw things off if you catch a, a, a sturgeon that, that that's you know uh, younger than that so yeah uh, that's right and in, in fact sturgeon uh, if the female sturgeon begin to reproduce at age 25 and the, after that they only spawn every five to seven years oh, wow. so you can see how the life history of this fish is different than other fishes and that's why over harvest of the largest individuals was what really caused the problem over 100 years ago that was the, the main cause for the population decline at that time but we've seen now steady recovery, as we've understood, to re- make sure we return those large fish back to the water. Uh, does this tell us anything about the health of our rivers themselves as well, like the water too, uh, the fact that the you know the sturgeon population has recovered so so well? Right. Well, sturgeon are actually quite robust. Uh, they can tolerate quite a variety of water quality conditions and temperatures. I mean, to to be a fish in Manitoba, you got to be tough because we have very warm uh, summers and very cold winters. So sturgeon are a fish that are tolerant of a variety of water quality conditions. Uh, what it tells us about the fish community is that it's returning to a, a normal or a very diverse fish community. It's good to have sturgeon, a lot of the suckers and catfish. Of course, Manitoba's famous walleye and our channel catfish our habitants of the Red River. So it just demonstrates that when we have a healthy ecosystem of a variety of fishes, it benefits all of us. 
And, and just for kind of news you can use, what are people supposed to do if they do catch a sturgeon? I know in this case they returned it legally. Like what what is the move if you if you catch a sturgeon? Yeah, for sure. If people are angling, let's say in the Red River in Winnipeg, which again, we have this fantastic fishery right inside the city of Winnipeg, uh, you know, be prepared to catch a fish this size. So, you know, if you if you're fishing, make sure you're ready with uh, with uh, tools and devices to remove the hook, um, have a place where you can land the fish safely where it's not on sharp rocks and so forth. And then try to get the fish back in the water as reasonably quickly as possible. We try to tell people, you know, think of about a minute. So if you are thinking you might catch a large fish, have your pliers ready, have your gloves ready, have your net ready, have a place to land the fish. And so when you take that fish out of the water, try to remove the hook. If you need, if you'd like to take a picture, in this case, it's great that Corwin did it. It's a great catch. Take that picture, but then try to get that fish back into the water as quickly as possible. Keeping in mind that all fish have a slime layer. And so you typically want to keep that slime layer on the fish. So trying not to handle it too much is beneficial. Uh, but again, the good news is a sturgeon are quite robust when it comes to catch and release fishing. Uh, we've had some studies done in Manitoba where it shows they're very, very tolerant of catch and release fishing. So this fish will likely be just fine that was released. And, uh, you know, it, it's it's great, again, a great news story. And we just encourage people to enjoy this fish and then return them back to the water as soon as possible after catching. But they can certainly take that picture and celebrate with their friends. Mm. And are they still technically uh, endangered or no? So what's their official status right now in, in Manitoba? Right, they don't have any official status. Uh, we, you know, we know that uh, that the federal CSEWIC has recommended a listing for them. But in Manitoba, we've seen their numbers improving almost everywhere we studied them. So it's interesting to see whether you know we get to a place where designation is required. Uh, right now, you know, in terms of the populations increasing in so many places, in, in my opinion, it doesn't seem like that would be the necessary step because we're, it's, we're in so much better shape than we were even 20 years ago. So, you know, our, our populations are improving dramatically. Uh, so that's, uh, that's where we stand with that. You ever caught a sturgeon yourself? I have caught a sturgeon myself. It's extremely exciting and uh, it's, I encourage everyone to, to go for it. How big was it? Bigger than this one or smaller? Do you remember? The, mine was smaller. I've caught a few that were smaller than this one. So again, Corwin's got me beat. <laughs> um, and just before I let you go here, you, you know, the, this is a good sign, obviously, for for the sturgeons. Uh, other fish populations, are they experiencing a similar growth or is this just a sturgeon thing? You know, I, I'd like to say that Manitoba has very well managed fisheries across the province. Uh, we're really, really fortunate with the numbers of of lakes and rivers that we have and the varieties of, of fisheries we have, both warm water species and cold water species. Manitoba really is blessed with a lot of great fishing and, you know, we've probably never been in a better place with, with our fish populations and our, our regulations, both on our uh, recreational side and our commercial fisheries are meant for that long-term sustainability. And, you know, Manitobans can expect good fishing for all the different fish species, no matter where they are. Uh, well, Derek, thank you for your time this morning. All the best. You're welcome. Thanks. Derek Craker is the fisheries manager at the government with the government uh, of Manitoba.